What an unboxing today, YouTube. Uh, a few Rolexes, some older ones, some new ones, and even a pocket watch from Rolex. Also, the brand everybody loves to hate, which is Hublot. I know you guys are guessing that it's Hublot, but I have a very special Hublot in here, a watch of a very, very famous soccer player, and not a limited edition, but one that actually belonged to him, along with a few other surprises, so stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna run through the modern Rolex quickly. Again, the smaller size lady, they just, they do sell. We do sell at least one or two of these a week. Uh, I like this variation. It's, it, it doesn't break the bank because it's a two-tone, but it's like a watch you can wear with a dress and a pair of jeans at the same time. The Jubilee bracelet, two-tone bracelet, tends to dress up a watch. And the addition of the champagne dial, meaning an old gold dial, you're, you're definitely getting a dressy look for less. Oh. I wanna give a shout out to Peter Paid. We, we did a deal with him where he traded some watches for another watch, and one of the watches he traded was a Samaritan. And look, Peter listens. See, see how he, this is perfect. Like, I know it looks terrible, you know, but if you're shipping a watch, especially a Rolex, and you got extra stuff sitting inside the box, this is the best and easiest way to prevent this watch from moving around too much, getting scratched up against its counterpart, especially when you got extra links lying in the box. It's just saran wrap, very easy. And I'm guessing this is the second watch that he traded in, which is a bluesy, but a current version. Peter, I'm sure whatever it is that you bought to trade in for these uh, two watches will be worthwhile and you will enjoy it. Oh look, it's another Rolex. Uh, but this time, this is a pocket watch, right? A pocket watch made for Cellini. Now, this is one of those things that you could pick up inexpensively. And I've always wondered why something, they didn't make a lot of these, and I always wondered, why is something like this so inexpensive? You know, it's under five grand. You know, you can pick up most of these Rolex pocket watches. But nevertheless, I think it's a very cool trinket, if you will. And I called it a trinket because usability-wise, not a lot of people out there using pocket watches today. I don't know, these are always saying to me, and that's why I bought it. The excuse is I think it's cool, and I'm glad Adrian is not part of this unboxing because he's gonna say, why, Roman, why? You get into buying somebody a gift of a Rolex watch, it gets, it gets up there, but something like this for a watch lover or a Rolex lover could be a cool present. Speaking of cool stuff, Daniel Roth. I've been talking about Daniel Roth for quite some time now, and I think the train has already sailed on the earlier Daniel Roths much as I talked about Breguet, Blanc Ponds, and as well as some of the older Chopard LUC pieces, stuff from the 80s to the 90s, right? Well, this is the next best thing. I don't wanna be the guy that tells you I told you so, guys, but I told you so. Every time I've talked about any sleeper, my predictions have come true, regardless of what's going on in the market. So what do you do when original Daniel Roth turbines, you know, become inaccessible in terms of price. I mean, one fetched way over 100,000. The brand is being revived right now. They're actually reviving it with the remake of the original Turbion, which is basically smaller than this one, right? This is also a Hunter case, which by the way, is very difficult to open if you don't know what you're doing. But a Hunter case is something that has a case back that opens up, right? And you have additional functionality in the back that, that show the watch off. For those of you that asked that question, the every single high-end Swiss made watch is at least 18 karat. There were some examples done by Rolex and their Daytonas where they made it in 14 karat, but most watches you're gonna come across, whether it's two-tone or just solid gold, it's always gonna be 18 karat. So what happens when you get priced out of some of the original turbines, some of the original stuff that they made in the 80s, right? You go further up and to the next stake. Now before, when Bulgari bought over Daniel Roth, this is from the Bulgari era. This is when Daniel Roth was already bought over by Bulgari, right? They made him a little bit bigger, but they still kept the same exact pedigree. There's no name Bulgari on here. It was at a later time where they went to pieces such as this, where they started making him bigger and bulkier because the time called for it. That's when the offshores were popping off. Everybody wanted bigger and better. The bigger the watch, the better. And uh, they started putting Bulgari on there along with the name of Daniel Roth. So again, next best thing. If you're looking at original one of these, you know, you're spending way over 150,000, maybe even $200,000 where pieces, which is the next generation, if you will, you're spending under a hundred. Yeah, maybe they made a little more of these than they did in the 80s, per se, but not a lot of these, or in the 90s, not a lot of these were made either because this is when Bulgari was just coming off the ground at post-purchase and trying to figure out what to do with the brand. And it took him quite a while to figure it out. Let's move on to this little white bag. And this has, you guys know how much I like my Cartier's collection Privé, right? Collection Privé, all limited edition runs. Something very unusual for Cartier. This is actually made in titanium. 
right? And what is so special about this watch? First of all, it was a limited edition of 15 pieces. Second of all, this has, the red is actually red enamel. If you zoom in closer, you can see. Perfectly skeletonized watch through. I can actually see you guys, right? And again, there's something about Ruby Cabochon, which is actually really pretty, but overall, the reason for me buying this watch is number one rarity because anytime I get a hold of something that is made in very limited quantities, uh, again, is this a watch that's going to fetch millions of dollars in the future in auction? No, it's not. But it's not always about the value behind a limited edition, but it's, it's often, for me at least, is putting something on my wrist that I know that the odds of me walking into a room and somebody else having this watch on are slim to none when there's 15 made worldwide, right? So that's sometimes it comes down to that. Obviously price point, this watch is under $50,000. And again, you're not paying hundreds of thousands for something that's rare, but this is rare because again, they only made 15. Cartier is the one brand that people collect quietly. Low Cartier collectors are the most low key collectors. And if you're gonna get into modern Cartier collecting, I've always suggested collection Privé. Every year, year in, year out, they come out with kick-ass pieces as part of that collection, and those are the ones I recommend. Now, I wanna get to the brand that everybody loves, Hublot. And I'm gonna start with something light. Hublot, automatic, baguette bezel. Simple to the point, doesn't break the bank. You go out to any other brand out there that's going to sell you, and this looks to, looks to be unisex. Uh, it could be a lady's watch on, or a men's watch. You go out anywhere to pick up a watch that has a diamond baguette bezel, you're paying $50,000 plus. With Hublot, you can often pick up deals that are under 20,000. So to me, I'm gonna call this a price point watch for what you get, right? Now, if you are a Hublot hater and will never wear a hater, don't. But guess what? Hublot is still a very popular brand. It makes up a significant amount of revenue for us here at Luxury Bazaar. That's why we always buy them and we always sell them. It's another Hublot, except definitely Again, it can be a men's watch, but definitely a ladies' watch. And again, uh, white ceramic baguette bezel. Now, I've talked about uh, I've talked about companies experimenting with materials. Hublot is one of those companies. You know, AP was for me is a front runner experimenting with materials. You have Richard Mille, but Hublot also doesn't shy away from experimenting with materials such as ceramics, such as uh, carbon, and many other things, much like some of the other companies. So, how about this? Does anybody? Can anybody tell me what emoji this watch reminds you of? Um, Let's, what, hold on, let me try this. And I know Matt's going to do something funny in post. Okay. What's the emoji? The, scream, the screaming emoji, right? Kind of reminds you of that, right? Again, people always talk about, oh, Hublot makes crappy watches and the movements of this and that, and they, and, they, and they charge too much for what they do. This is the MP09. 3D double axis tourbillon. And a lot of impressive things from this watch horologically. This was all made by Hublot in-house, so they didn't outsource this. Obviously, the first thing we're gonna start with is not the inner workers, but look at the crystal. To achieve that in a crystal, which is a one-piece crystal that's bent around this funky case, right? Think about it. It goes from here all the way out. This is a single piece. That's an achievement on its own. Making crystals such as this for a watch is not very easy. Last, uh, let's go to the second thing, which is obviously gonna be the 3D tourbillon, right? You have the 3D tourbillon that spins among two axes, right? So you see it kind of going this way and the other way, right? Five day power reserve for this machine, which is also very impressive on a watch because for a watch that has a, 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 <clears throat> a double axis tourbillon to have a five day power reserve is also very impressive. Oddly enough, usually for watches like this that tend to be very busy, it's hard to read the time, but I think what they did well here is they put the time here, sort of between the 12 and two o'clock. Very easy to read the time on this thing. Overall, big watch, it's a 48 millimeter watch, but because of how it's done ergonomically, even on my small wrist, notice it does hug my wrist, right? Because this is a big watch, it measures 48 millimeters. And last but not least, I'm gonna to get to the most impressive watch of the unboxing. I told you guys we've been, you know, about the Robert Downey Jr. watch. And there's an old saying, when it rains, it pours, right? So sometimes we get, uh, piece. We get uh, 
pieces that are belong to famous people back to back. And this one unfortunately belonged to a person that has since passed away and his name was Diego Maradona, arguably one of the greatest soccer players that ever lived. It's funny how I'm wearing a soccer jersey. Diego Maradona. Now, you guys know that Hublot made a few limited edition pieces for Maradona, right? In gold, titanium, etc. But what a lot of people don't know is there were four pieces made specifically for him. Basically, there's a lot more blue inside the original one that they made, right? So what this is, is this is one of four pieces that were made for him. And the reason there were four of them is because each one of them had different engravings in the back. For example, this has a picture of young Maradona in the back. I'm gonna unbuckle this so I can show you the back. Now, one of these uh, did sell. The last one of these I saw for sale. It was only one publicly sold. It was sold in an auction. Sadabi sold one of these for 201,000 last. It wasn't this one. It was one that depicted a different engraving. And I'll do a separate video with Nina Bits to show you all the different ones. But this is, again, worn by him, given to him one of four pieces made specifically for him. This is where you're combining the world of collectibles, especially sports memorabilia and sports collectibles with the world of watches, right? So this is something for someone that is a huge soccer fan and also a horology nut. And it's cool to own that piece of memory, for especially from one of the greats. And YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, any questions, contact my guys throughout the office on their Instagram accounts, through YouTube, email, phone, we fax. Yeah, I guess you can fax. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.